Good morning, good evening, good night, whenever you guys are watching this channel, first subscribe. I got this from someone uh, probably about a week ago, and this is a perfect example of what not to do when you're taking a CWI exam. And I made a video on this before about getting an average of at least 72. If you don't, you got to take all three tests over again. And that's very frustrating because check this out. This is a perfect example. Check this out. It says this is a report pertaining to your test performance. Unfortunately, your examination scores do not qualify you for a CWI or a CAWI. A CAWI is a certified assistant welding inspector at this time. CWI certifications requires a passing score of 72 or greater on each part of the exam. A CAWI uh, certification requires a passing score of 60% or greater on each part of the exam. The average is a simple average of all three parts rounded to the nearest whole number. Your results are shown below. So this is his results. If he would have made a 60 right here, he would be qualified as a CAWI, Certified Assistant Welding Inspector. He missed that by two. But the bad thing, check this out, is that on part A, he made a 79, which he was 72 or higher. Part B, he made a 72, which he was 72 or higher. So he passed the part A and B. And a lot of people struggle with B. On his part C, this is what got him right here. He made a 58. Now, I'm going to go down a little bit. You see right there, now he has an average of 70%. So in... So now he have to take all three exams over again. So you got to pay for part A, B, and C. You know, if he would have made about a, maybe 65, 66 right here, he would have been qualified as a CAWI, but he would only have to take part C over again because that average would have been over a 72. But since it's under a 72, you have to take all three exams of these exams over again and that's what you don't want to do especially part b you know i get a lot of calls a lot of emails about part b how to study for part b so unfortunately this is what you don't want to do so if you're strong in an area like part a and try to score as high as you can you know prepare yourself for these tests especially the week before if you got to cram this stuff in cram it in uh, if you like me, uh, if you uh, you cram it in and then two or three weeks later, you'll forget all that stuff. But right before the test, make sure you understand and study for this. This If you're paying $3,200 to take a course and an exam and you fail it, it's kind of discouraging because now you're going to have to pay, not $3,200 again, but you're going to have, have to pay a reduced price to pay to take these tests over again. So this is a perfect example right here of what you do not want to do. You do not want to do this. So yeah, I reiterate it again. If you're strong in this area, part A, score as high as you can. Part B, score high as you can. Part C, score high as you can. If you fail one test, it's okay to take that one test over. But if you get in this predicament right here, now you got a chance of failing part A, B, or C. So now, unfortunately, I hate to say it, this person got to take all three tests over again because he didn't have an average score of 72. But you go on down here, it, it explains to you right here. Uh, if your average for these three parts is 72 or greater, you may retest only on the part you fail. If the average is below 72, which is this is below 72, a complete retest is required. So you got to take all three tests. Candidates are permitted to take up to three retests within three years of the original exam date. Applicants may take the first test of the failed segments without additional training. Any additional retest, second or third retest, shall require documents or evidence of additional training 16 hours of a one part or two part retest, 40 hours or three part test retest. 
So this go on and on and, and you can pause this and read some of this stuff, but this is the breakdown. They also send you a breakdown um, of what you got right and what you got wrong. You see the stuff in blue. Each blue bar indicates the number of questions you answered correctly in a uh, content category. So this right here, and it breaks it down. They don't make it easy. It tells you a percentage is uh, what, how many questions are on here on this one it's for the welding processes, welding performance, welding examination. So it gives you a percentage of breakdown. So if it says you got a hundred, just say for example, you got a hundred questions and they say 40% is on the welding processes. So that'll be 40 questions. So you got 20, right? And you missed 20. So why don't they just make it easy and say, hey, you got 30 questions in this section, 25 in this one, 20 in this one. So you know, hey, if I got 40 in this one, I missed 20, I got 20 wrong. Or if I got 20 in this one, I got 12 right, so I missed the eight. So you see right here, and it's all in your book. It breaks it down in percentages. Just like this, you see maybe his cutting, he had uh, problems right here. This is part A, he made a 79. But he did pretty good, but the welding performance right here, I think it's more question. I had it broken down in one of my other videos on what percentages or what numbers are that you need. So, you know, like I consult with different people and they send me their information and I consult with them and tell them, hey, you need to study more of your effort on welding processes or maybe you need test methods, NDT, or maybe your weak point is cutting. So you can concentrate more on that. But I'm going to have it on my website where you can consult with me. Just click on it and we'll do hourly rates and I'll consult with you on what exactly you need to study to pass this test. It's not an easy test. That's why everybody do not take it. And if you could see, he took this test in August of last year, 2021. So it's May right now. And he's just deciding, hey, I'm going to try it again. I know it's discouraging, you know, but sometimes you have to, if you fail, keep trying. Eventually you'll get to that breaking point. Uh, most people quit right at the time that their fizz to start passing. So they just stop right there. But I know this is very discouraging when you have a test score like this. So it breaks down all the stuff. It tells you everything. And like you say, you got to take part B in class and part A and C at a Prometric site. And I'm going to show you the results from the pr Prometric sites, also what they send you. And this breaks down part B. You know, I think he made a, a 72 on part B. But you see, he's good at welding. Um, inspection and flaws you know utilization of specifications of drawings he got four so he will have to probably look at util utilizations of specifications and drawings and then ndt but this right here if you add these up you got 10 10 20 29 you got 33 right there so 33 questions and if you go up here you could do the math on calculate all of those so they're giving you the, the categories of what you got right and we'll go on down in the part c look at this right here and you know he made a 58 on the part c but the reports and procedures he didn't get any questions right on that i don't know if he ran out of time and didn't answer any of it uh or just really confused on how to answer those even if he would have got two or three of these right uh, he would have been a C-A-W-I. If he would have got four or five, he probably would have made about a 72 or 74. So he would have passed that test. So I don't know what happened right here, but that's something uh, he should look into very, very, very closely, you know, reports and procedures. And like I said, I did a, a thing before where I tell how many questions are on each one. And I think this one may had 10 or maybe 15. I think it, this one had a, a lot of questions right here because you deal with a lot of reports and records. So I think he was confused on how to put 
the different things in and he just maybe either pass it up or just got frustrated and just say hey forget it and didn't even complete the test um, but it explains to you and this is what you get from American Wellness Society breaks down everything and like I said why don't they just make make it real simple hey you got 40 questions in this section you missed 20 you need to you you got 20 right but <laughs> You know, I think it's all about money. You know, the more tests you fail, the more you have to pay to AWS. And I try to get on their website, and AWS website is messed up now. I talked to them on the phone. They said it's been messed up for a month now. That don't make sense to me. An organization that big have a website that's still messed up? Come on, guys. AWS, <laughs> get your stuff together. Um, I'm going to show you what he got from their Prometric site. Prometrics is where you take part um, A and C. So he didn't get no report for part A because he passed it, but he did get a report for part C, which he took it over API 1104. And it breaks down all the stuff. You remember on the records right here, he got 0%. He didn't, and this is done on a computer. So I don't know what happened. I don't know if he just got confused or what. And he would have did good right here. You notice that everything else is at a 50% level. If he would have got any of these right at 50%, he would have passed the CWI exam. Probably would have made an 80 or so on that. You know, um, qualifications, uh, he's 50%. You see he's good with fabrication. So maybe he's good with the d1.1 but the fabrication he got 82 percent and material and design is 75 percent so this is the report that you get from prometric site if you fail part a or c so i just wanted to share this information with you guys and if i have quizzes if you want to test they'll be in the description below or you can go to my website at www.weldingandstuff.net I don't have the .com, it's .net so it's www.weldingandstuff.net and I will also put links in the description of if you want to take some practice quizzes and I think it's it's worth every penny of it you know, um, I get testimonies from people that have purchased these quizzes and they really enjoyed them and, and they learned a lot from them because it breaks down on what you got right and what you got wrong. So it gives you your results if you got the answers right or wrong, which is good. Because sometimes I take a test, if I make a hundred, I could swear I would I have missed ten of those questions, but I don't see the results of which ten I guessed at them, but I guess right. So I would like to see what I missed and what I got wrong on my quizzes and on my uh, website and you click on that it shows you it breaks down of what you got wrong and it gives you the correct answer to that question it's very beneficial like my part B I need to update it a little bit it's hard to create a quiz online for part B but if you're gonna take this CWI is good the CWI exam is good to invest a little money in taking these quizzes and the quizzes are in the link below and I'm going to also update my website and put more information on it uh, where we can consult and it'll be a consultant fee you can link on it if you need to speak to me for an hour and we can go over these test results or I can recommend what you need to study and I got plenty of material and people send me material all the time thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel and like I said if you want to take any quizzes or anything just Look in the description below. You look in the description below and there's some links or you go to my website. Thank you and have a great day.